You know, whenever the topic of artificial general intelligence, or AGI, comes up, the conversation tends to get, well, a little dramatic. We're almost always shown two completely opposite futures. And it's always framed with this one huge question. Is AGI going to bring us a perfect utopia, or is it going to be a total apocalypse? It's a heck of a choice, right? But what if that's the wrong question to be asking in the first place? So on one side, you have the dream of utopia, right? A world with unlimited abundance, where we all get to unlock our true potential. But then there's the other side, the catastrophe. We're talking social collapse, no more jobs, and humans completely losing control. These are really powerful stories, but they're probably missing what's actually going to happen. Because as the analysis we're digging into today suggests, the most probable path isn't clean or simple at all. It's what's being called a messy middle. A future with high automation, yeah, but also high tension. It's way more complicated than either of those extreme visions. So let's break down what that really means for us. So what creates this messy middle? Well, it all boils down to one single powerful dynamic that's probably going to define the next few decades. It's this massive collision between the incredible speed of technology and the, well, the much slower pace of human society. Think of it as acceleration meets friction. And just so we're all on the same page, when we talk about AGI in this explainer, we're using a really practical definition. This isn't about robot consciousness or anything from the movies. We're just talking about systems that can do a whole bunch of economically valuable jobs at or even better than a competent human can. Okay, so here's how that core dynamic works. First, you've got this insane acceleration. AI is getting better and adopted faster than we can blink. But that speed slams right into friction from our institutions, you know, law, politics, education, which adapt really, really slowly. And that creates this huge widening gap between what the technology can do and what we can actually roll out safely and legally. And that gap, that's where all the messiness lives. So what does this high-tension, messy world actually look like? How does it feel on a day-to-day -day basis? Let's take a look at how this all plays out in our economy, our personal security, and even in the physical world. First off, in the workplace, expect some serious churn. All those routine, predictable brain work tasks, they're gonna get automated and fast. This puts a ton of pressure on those mid-skilled jobs. At the same time, it creates a huge premium for jobs that need a lot of trust, real-world context, and just complex human interaction. But this brings up a huge question. What happens to all those entry-level jobs where people actually learn how to do stuff? They might get a whole lot harder to come by. And as AI starts driving this massive boost in productivity, the whole political game is going to change. The big fight won't just be about creating wealth anymore. It'll be about how we divvy it all up. Who gets what and how they get it, that becomes the single biggest political fight there is. Now, when you think about AI risks, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Probably killer robots, right? Well, the source material here makes a really critical point. The most immediate, predictable threat isn't physical at all. It's digital. We're talking about fraud, but on an industrial scale we've never seen before. And what this kicks off is a massive security arms race. The threat? AI-powered deepfakes and super-sophisticated scams become just a normal, everyday thing. The response? We'll have to build out huge defenses like verified digital IDs and systems that can prove where a video or image actually came from. And here's a tough pill to swallow. We will almost certainly have to trade a good chunk of our privacy and convenience just to keep a basic level of security. And what about actual robots? Well, you can forget that image of humanoids walking down every street. The rollout is going to be way more practical, and it'll happen in stages. First, you get the invisible stuff. Software agents and robots in places we don't see, like warehouses. Then come the specialized robots for specific jobs in controlled areas. Think cleaning or delivery. The general-purpose humanoids? They're coming much, much later. And only after they're cheap, super reliable, and we figured out all the legal nightmares. All right, so we painted this picture of a messy, complicated future. But just how likely is it, really, compared to those other scenarios? Well, let's actually look at the numbers. So, take a look at this. The absolute best-case scenario, this broad prosperity, is given just a 5% chance. Ouch. Severe instability sits at 10%. But look at managed disruption, our messy middle. That's sitting at a whopping 60%. This isn't just some fringe possibility. It's the future we most need to be getting ready for. Okay, so if this messy managed disruption is the most likely path, what are we supposed to do about it? How do we actually navigate the crazy decades ahead? This timeline gives us a kind of roadmap for the journey ahead. 
Right now, in the late 2020s and into the 2030s, we are smack in the middle of a tooling revolution combined with a deep trust crisis. That's the fraud at scale part. The next phase, through the 2030s, is the physical spillover, where automation really starts to move out of software and into the real world. And only after all that, from the 2040s on, do we get to the long, hard work of rebuilding institutions to finally catch up to the tech. So what can you do, personally, to get ready? The advice is pretty pragmatic. First, build skills that complement AI instead of competing with it. We're talking things like critical judgment, systems thinking, and building real trust with clients. Second, raise your personal security game, like yesterday. Strong authentication isn't optional anymore. And third, just expect your career to be volatile. That means planning for longer gaps between jobs and accepting that you're going to have to constantly be reskilled. And really, it all boils down to this. This technology is making our world incredibly powerful, but also way more contested. Our future isn't going to be written by the code itself. It's going to be determined by how well we build the very human systems of governance, trust, and fairness needed to manage all that new power. And that leaves us with the final, most important question. This isn't just a technical problem for engineers to solve. It's a deeply social one. The real work ahead is figuring out exactly how we're going to build the strong governance and deep trust we desperately need to navigate this transition and steer ourselves through that messy middle.